I've been doing yet more shopping with Mercedes. This little bag of rubber bands doesn't mean I'm going to play loom bands or be braiding my hair. Um, I have finally, I think, identified after a year of faffing around what's actually wrong with this car. It's a fairly common problem on cars using Bosch K-Tronic fuel injection that have either just been around all a long time, especially if they've been sat a long time. It's this rubber diaphragm and all the little rubber bushes inside at the fuel injection distributor. So I'm going to take it off and put lots of little rubber bands in it and maybe that'll make the car start. Ah, spider webs. There are a whole load of variations on these things, so you have to make sure that when you take it apart, you look at this number down the plate and order the right one, um, because there's four, six and eight cylinder engines, and obviously they all use their own version and have different numbers of little washers and things in them. And also, interestingly, most of these things seem to come from America as well. And there's another, this is a, a Salvox rebuild kit, but there's another brand, um, also made in America, but shipping from America for about twice the price. This one made in America, but ships from the UK, so I didn't have to pay import tax and wait several weeks for it to arrive, which is nice. First of all, I'm disconnecting the inlet and outlet pipes to and from the fuel tank, and also I'm going to, and obviously the uh, injector lines as well. I will mark them as to which one goes where, otherwise I won't have a problem. Then it's three screws and this thing should just lift off. That's just clockwise. One, two, three, four. Just so that I can know which one goes back where when I'm done with it. Now, oh, wasp, go away wasp. And we'll leave these injector cable pipes just loosely hooked onto the individual ends so I've got a chance of putting them back or finding which goes where just really hard to get a spanner on oh thank you now everything's freed off so in theory I should be able to just stick a screwdriver in here and undo these three bolt screws, I should say, and lift this thing out. If they will undo, which you know they won't. Oh, there we go, one free. Now, if you look at the top of one of these things, there are four kind of Allen key kind of thingies holding them in place. And it is vital you never disturb them because I was sat at the factory when the thing's new and they're kind of metering for the, the um, injectors. And unless you've got the ridiculously expensive Bosch tool for resetting them, you don't mess around with those. Oh. oh, this is just jumping it. Now these three retaining screws are monumentally tight. Um, I don't know if that's rust or just ridiculously talked down. Well, I can actually feel the screwdriver twisting hard once I'm done. This is one area I probably can't use a heat induction tool because I don't think I really want to be putting a lot of heat onto a uh, fuel injection system. That might not end well. Do you know something I've never tried on this car? Is pulling these catches for the service mode. Full height bonnet lift, whoops. should go vertical. Oh, it does. That's exciting and keeps the sun off. I have now soaked that last sticky screw in WD-40 and I hope that might make a bit of difference. I mean, it is caked in oil anyway, so it shouldn't really need much lubrication. I'll take a moment while that's soaking in to say thank you very much indeed to my new Patreon sponsors who have helped uh, fund buying this pack of little tiny bits of rubber, which even the cheaper version was about 50 quid. So uh, thank you very much indeed for that, that contribution, which has helped get this car closer to the road. Um, meanwhile, if you'd like a super duper furious driving mug, they are on Redbubble, who are making all my stickers, mugs, t-shirts and so forth. And they do look quite fun in the garage. Um, there's 30% off today, but that's no good to you because this won't go up today. But if you sign up for the Redbubble's newsletter, they do frequently put out big discounts, 20, 30%, um, which is well worth it because uh, 
although the prices are quite good the postage is a bit, postage is a bit high which I can't do anything about unfortunately but if you hit the 30% off day or 20% off day that would effectively give you free postage I'm now going to hit this with, with a hammer shock therapy Quite a long screw by the looks of it. Oh god it's turning, yes! WD-40 and a whack and it's free! Right, so let's see if we can free this thing. Oh there we go! I don't know if you hear that rumbly noise behind me, but there's a combine harvester going up and down the field around the corner. Well, something covered in dust in a minute. Right, I'll take this bracket. Oh, there's a washer I'm going to lose, and so let's not lose the washer. Oh, it's an earth strap. Oh, that's interesting. I'll leave that connected there just so that now I know where that is. And this pipe can now be pulled clear. And this should now. Ooh, grubby old petrol pouring out. Uh, yellow fuel from that part of the valve. But this is a Bosch 04381071 four pot fuel injection distributor. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go and read a book about how this comes apart because I think you want to do these little star things on the bottom. In fact, it has to be that, because that's the only thing that would hold it together. But before I disturb them, I'm going to go read something, and I'll take some doors into the shade of the garage. Okay, so, working on this bench, I've got to be fairly careful not to mix up the bits of Rover V8, which are scattered around here in many, many pieces, uh, with the bits I'm about to take off this Mercedes thing. Um, I've already doused it in WD-40 to try and give it a bit of a break. Um, watched a couple of videos on how you take these things apart and the first one I watched was the Volkswagen one and the first thing the guy did it's quite a small little star there we go star oh yeah it came up quite easily I watched the thing on the YouTube about how you strip one of these things apart and the guy doing the Volkswagen one just shattered or snapped all the teeth off his um, little star socket the first time he tried to turn it and I was expecting a real fight Well, that was easier than I expected. A little too easy, if you ask me. I really didn't think this was going to come apart anywhere near as simple as that. If you're wondering about the various noises you can hear in the background, my neighbour's got a couple of motorbikes, and one of them has been pulled out of long-term storage. I mean, kind of this Black Rover kind of long-term storage, even though it's a fair degree younger. And he's trying to get started, which he hasn't done for a long old time. If you're a Mercedes fan or a W123 fan, you might have been watching Kent Berg Seymour on the Mercedes Source channel trying to resurrect a W123, a diesel one. Uh, I've got to say, this, what's it called? Um, not Doris, it's Digby. Digby the W123, the brown one. He's had significantly less trouble with his car getting that car rolling than I've had with this car. But I guess that car has been in constant use for the last, well, two or three decades. Whereas this car's been sat in a barn gathering rot. Now the one thing, none of these handy how-tos tell you what to do, is how to actually get it apart. All handy useful things about actually refitting the rubber bushes and stuff. Nothing about actually breaking the thing in pieces in the first place. Useful note, there are numbers on the same side. 36, 35 at the top, 23 at the bottom, but when I put it back together, line the numbers up. That's going to be good to remember. Right, just use a... Oh, I thought Petra come in now. Used a blade um, to just sort of tap in and break the seal because it was not coming out. I've watched loads of videos of how these things just drift apart. Naturally mine isn't drifting apart, it's refusing to shift in any way, shape or form. Hmm, that's probably bad. 
or what you didn't see just then was as I pulled that apart, because the camera stopped for a moment, um, as I put, <laughs> literally at the moment that the, everything fell in half, um, all the springs flew out and all these little uh, caps flew out and you meant to keep them together, but I guess we won't. I'm sure that will be fine. And I do really wish I had seen how this comes apart. Now these rubber rings, I don't know if, how well you can see these, but these rubber rings should be tight around these openings, so I'm going to replace all of those in a second. And this diaphragm, looking at the one here in the bag, which is completely flat, is not special. Oh, it's horrible, ancient rubber, and the little disc have pressed so far into the rubber over the years that they've now permanently indented, and that's not doing a thing. That's not even slightly rubber. It's like, like card almost. So that is for the bin. So these little rubber washers, what do you call them, O-rings. They are spent. They should be tiny and rubbery, elastic and tight, but they're not. They are terrible and old. It says not to use carb cleaner on this because it will dissolve many of the components. Use petrol, and one thing there is an abundance of on here is petrol. So that's all right. Okay, wash the diaphragm in soapy water before fitting. I did not know that. Interesting, the inside of this doesn't look that dirty. <laughs> right, so I've had a bit of a play around and I've worked out where all the bits that fell out go. And so the little top hat shaped things drop in here and are little caps to sit, little seats, I should say, for the main springs. The little smaller spring, the little thinner spring that flew out, sits on top of here to wing that up and down. I've given this little clean up with electrical contact cleaner because it said don't use carb cleaner and that seemed like a good solution. Now this central part does not want to move at all and it does say you've got to put it back in exactly the same position as it came out of so I'm loath to disturb it but I can't get this particular rubber washer out. It will not move at all. Oh, yeah. It's stretched but it's also too non-rubbery, oh, okay. gunked in there, free. Which I think must be that one, no, that's too big. That's too small, must be that one. There we go, that's good. And these are the four. Oh boy, that snaps off really easily. I can see myself losing one of these things before I've got the, uh, before I've got it reassembled. I'm going to run out of fingers fairly soon. A good tip on the Salvox Salvox website was to use the old... That's too stiff to do that though. It said use the old rubber band to keep that in place, but that's way too tight to do anything with. And that's just dropped off as well. One of them has just fallen off and I can't see where it's gone. Oh, two have popped off now. Oh, great. I'll take those three off as well before they all ping off and vanish into the undergrowth. So I have now, so now I have assembled, sorry, now I have washed this rubber diaphragm in warm soapy water, which makes it nice and soft and malleable. Now I will attach the O-rings back around, oops. Now this is gonna be a nightmare. Do you know what? I'm gonna pause the cameras for a bit because otherwise you're gonna have about half an hour of me just taking rubber washers on and off again repeatedly and shouting a lot. So join me again in a few minutes. Just need to drop this back in here. That was way too easy. Well, that's interesting. It wasn't making a hissy noise when I pumped the thing before. So that's a big improvement. That means fuel is a pumping. I've just found where one of the missing O-rings or the spare O-rings goes. It was stuck to the bottom or stuck to the top of the uh, inlet plenum. So that's going to pop that on the bottom of the uh, fuel distributor. Give it a quick wipe over, it's less disgusting. 
So yeah, that now goes on there. That's a much better seal than this flat, goopy old piece of rubbish that would do. More for the bin. Right. Let's get this thing in here. I just want to wheedle it around in here, I should say. Whoops, there we go. That seems to be whoop, almost the right place. You know, I've had this fuel injection system apart so many times over the last year that I can pretty much do it blindfolded now. So putting all that back together took about 10 minutes. Now, the last thing left to do, reconnect the battery, turn the key and see if it works. Wish me luck, because if this works, it will be a monumental moment, a triumph over a year of adversity and this thing refusing to go. Let's turn that key. Oh, come on, let's throw some easy starts in there. Well, that's annoying. Well, I guess I won't be taking it for a test drive this bank holiday weekend. Well, do you know what? I really thought this was going to be the thing that did it. I thought, you know, rebuild the field distributor and it would fire up, but no. What I have done, changing the diaphragm, the fact I now get like a vacuum of pss, pss, air when I squeeze it, it shows it should be pumping fuel now, which it clearly isn't. Well, something isn't doing something. So, um, yeah, that's very annoying. I really thought I'd be listening to a purring Mercedes engine right now but clearly I'm not, so I don't know. Bother, bother again. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'm guessing I'm gonna take the fuel pipes off again and start checking where it's going to and see if it's actually still reaching the distributor. Yeah, it's Diagnostic 101 all over again. Oh well, see you next time.